What's up, boys? Back out here. Engine is in the engine bay, if you've seen the last video. I gotta hook up this transmission mount, and then all the mounts are hooked up. I left all these chains and everything on because for some reason, I actually think it doesn't line up. I think you gotta take this one back off, then use like the cherry picker to pick this end up so that side's lower. It's probably gonna be a fight. So let's get started on that. I gotta get this uh, bolt out so I can get this chain off, and then I'll show you that bracket just bolts into those four holes right there. Here it is right here. I'll go on like this. It can go two different ways, but it won't bolt up. So if you see here and you like attach it to the transmission upside down, the bolt holes won't line up. You see how they're like spaced differently. These two that are closer together go to, towards the front of the car. You see the bolt will line up, but then you see how high this transmission mount's gotta come up? It's gotta come way up. I guess I can try to jack it. Look how high it's gotta come up. I remember this one being a pain, but Jesus, it's gotta come up that high. I mean, I could try to put the floor jack under the transmission and jack it up, but this is gonna tilt it. If I leave this bolt loose, I should be able to move this any way I need to. I mean, I guess the engine is kind of leaning that way just a little tiny bit. Yeah, let's crack these loose. I'm not gonna take them off all the way though. I'm gonna leave them on like two or three threads so it doesn't fall. <laughs> Those, these two are lined up. I can't find the legit torque. I was looking at the forms and people are just arguing with each other. It's actually pretty funny if you wanna go look at it. I think everything that goes to the body is supposed to be like 70 something. But then one, another guy says, no, it's 49. I guess I'm gonna do 50. If you guys can find the actual torque, leave it down in the comments for me. These bolts that go from the body to this mount, I'm gonna do 50. Okay, got that uh, engine mount on, got that all tightened back up. I gotta do this power steering pump and pretty much all these pulleys over here. There's no way for me to record it. Like you guys aren't gonna be able to see. That power steering pump gets held on with two bolts. Gotta get the tensioner pulley on, which you can't really record. It goes right there. Yeah, I'll bring it back once I get all these pulleys on. Oh yeah, real quick, I'm gonna jump back in here. I would run this wire. It uh, goes to your oil pressure sensor and your uh, power steering pump. Get this on before you completely bolt that in. You'll never get this on if you don't. It's, it's a pain to try to get it on once it's all tucked back in there. Got the power steering pump on, got the tensioner pulley, just it's on, but it's loose so I can still move it around. I think I'm gonna put the alternator on next. It's a pain to try to do the whole thing at once. So I'm gonna try to do that because I like making my life hard. Bracket and the alternator. It's gonna be easier to do that before you put your other pulleys on. And you definitely can't get the bracket and alternator out with the radiator in. Pretty much gonna go on like that. You see a little metal bracket? It's gonna go on kind of at an angle and bolt into those two holes and then two over here. Got that bracket on the heads. I think that's gonna be the easiest way to get that on there so you're not trying to like screw it up underneath. I don't even know if you'd be able to. And then probably start these ones first over here because you don't want that all the weight just hanging on your head like that, probably. Oh yeah, you should put a ground from here to there. So just clean this off, make sure this is good for a good ground wire to hook to. This car has a grounding problem. I'm sure most of you guys know about it. There's like five extra grounds you should put on this. You need it on the other side of the radiator, but you kind of don't want to see it either, you know? I'm just gonna leave it like that for now, I'll tighten this up. Okay, let's get this uh, coil pack on. You gotta get a 10 mil, you see that little hole right there? All the way right there. And it's hard to do. You gotta get it up there, slide it around that hose, and then get a long extension down under there. I'm going to just put this one in first. Let's get it snug to where you can still move it. This one, since I'm not running that bracket, I gotta put like two washers in there, but I'm sure I get this bottom one lined up first. I'm not gonna be able to record it. I'll just bring it back. You're gonna have to move it back and forth and try to get it lined up with that 10 mil. All right, I did everything over here. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to film it too well anyways. I got my shift linkers hooked up. I got my grounds hooked up. I got my wiring harness all ran. Everything over here is pretty good. I got my slave cylinder hooked back up. We'll hook up this intake runner and then I can put the injectors on, which are already on the fuel rail. Then all I gotta do is plug them in. Okay, just realized that the camera was off. I was talking to nobody. I, uh, before I put these on, I talked about it a few videos ago. I went with 
nail polish remover, acetone, and cleaned all these surfaces under this gasket so it has a nice mating surface. And then I also did the same thing to this. So everything's nice. This is not fun to do because of all these little things. I talked about it in a video a long time ago. These little plastic pieces, they'll fall off and then you pretty much gotta take this off to get it out because they're plastic, you can't use a magnet. So I glued them. I put super glue on the bottom of them. I'm gonna to take some carb cleaner and clean these runners out. Make sure you clean these out real good, these little holes. This is where your injectors go. So if you got any crud up in there, your little O-ring won't seal right, you'll have a fuel leak, and you have to take this all back apart, it'll suck. Make sure this nipple is going towards the front of the car, and the three, you'll probably have bolts. I did studs, but make sure the three holes are going towards the front of the car, because that's the way your intake manifold bolts on, is with these two in the back. I don't even know if you can put it on backwards. Oh yeah, you can definitely put it on backwards. So you don't want to sit here and torque this thing down. Make sure it's going this way. Then you got all these little rubber washer, springy, doohickey thingamabobbers. Um, if you know these are for, leave them down in the comments. I don't really know, but don't drop them. They'll go on these studs. These are only 11 too, so don't go crazy. Okay, I don't know if that was the right pattern. But do them twice. You know, I, I started over there, I went back. I probably got a good quarter of a turn out of everything again once you sandwich it down even. So just do it twice and then make sure they got pretty much the same amount of threads sticking out of every one of them. Especially if like your machine shop painted them. Because this one, it tore down but it was still at the very top because there was some paint left on it. So just check and make sure you got the same amount of threads coming out of every one. So you're not like getting a a fake torque when you're actually just caught up on paint, you know what I mean? And then these, this is where your fuel rails bolt to. I think I already talked about this, but I super glued these because I've, I've dropped them and then you have to take everything apart to get it out because they're plastic. And I uh, I don't know exactly what they're for, maybe just as like a little buffer for like vibration. Super glue will break before like the rail breaks or something. You know what I mean? Like if that's why it's there. So that's just a little trick that I guess I'd share with you guys, I don't know. Maybe I'm an idiot for super gluing it, but I'm tired of having them fall off. Let's get these fuel rails on. If you're new, these are 800 cc injectors and um, you should probably put a little bit of grease on these O-rings. Couldn't find any of like my good lube. So I just used a barely a little bit of oil on all of these, which will be fine honestly, because if anything, it'll just spray some oil down in the um, cylinders on startup, which is fine. I'm gonna put some on here too. I just want these to kind of slide in as easy as possible. The reason why I li like that grease because it helps slide stuff on, but then as soon as it gets warm, it turns into like a glue. It's awesome shit. I don't know where it's at. Okay, let's get these on. These back ones, I just left the wire on because this plugs in. These front ones, I'm gonna have to clip back in. I actually think I gotta clip these in before I put it on. Yeah, I do. So you have these clips that hold your injector plugs on. And you don't really need them. I know a lot of people don't even run them. But if you're like on a bumpy road or something and they pop off, you're gonna be sitting here wondering what's wrong with your car. Why is your car running like shit when it's just one injector line popped off and that's not the first thing you're gonna go look for, you know? I'll come over. This is a pain to try to line up. And then get these started as soon as possible. The biggest thing is to get all those <clears throat> rubber o-rings lined up perfectly because sometimes you'll get it to where everything's lined up you'll go back and look and one of them will be halfway out just the o-ring and you know that's gonna leak so just check check and keep checking you're gonna have to sit here and sometimes you might even have to use a screwdriver and pry one i tore those fuel rails at 11 by the way i didn't look it up but it's going into aluminum so i'm sure it's right that or 17. now i gotta get these fuel lines hooked up this is what sucks when you make everything the exact right length that now i'm gonna fight this the whole damn time back out here i uh i've actually been out here all morning kind of just been reorganizing this mess this rat's nest over here i'm a freak i just want everything to be ran perfectly i don't want stuff like crossed over that doesn't need to be crossed over i think i'm good i could probably hook up like turbo inlet pipes but I, uh, I still got a lot to do under the car so i gotta put the axles back in if you see when i took this out 
I just took the whole axles out. I just disconnected the coil over, then laid the wheel flat. So I can slide this whole thing out. Same thing on that side. Gotta put those in. Gotta put my cross member in. Gotta put my uh, transfer case in. Gotta put the drive shaft in. Put the exhaust back on. This, I don't know how much of it I'm gonna be able to record to where you guys can actually see me doing it, but you guys have all seen me take it out multiple times and probably put it back in multiple times. It's pretty simple stuff, boys. Got the oil pressure sensors hooked up. Got this axle back in and the half shaft. Got it all hooked back up. Everything over here is pretty much done besides the oil core lines and then the tensioner pulley brackets gotta go on. I'm gonna go do the other side. If for some reason you didn't see how I took these apart, I just take these bolts out right here and take your tie rod out and then drop this down flat. It just slides in and then you can pick it up and put it in there. Put your axle in there. Okay, just get it all folded over like that. Then you can slide your axle into your transmission and then into there. Same thing on the other side. You just got that half shaft. It's a lot harder to deal with. That's why I didn't record it. It's just the same thing. It's just time consuming. It'll pop in. There we go. Yep, you'll see when it's flush on the transmission. And you gotta get one back up with that coil over. There you go, then just put it all back together. Let's get this cross member on. Look who showed up. All right, yeah, let's get this cross member on, then transfer case, drive shaft, and exhaust. Okay, I got that cross member in. Transfer case. It's gonna hook onto these splines right here, and then these bolts. Three long ones, two short ones. And then your transfer case, which is made of glass, so be careful. These are uh, 22, is what the manual says. So torque these at 22 if you want everything torqued. Now it's time for the drive shaft. Okay, I got the two piece aluminum. I've talked about it before. Most of you guys probably already know. This flash rusting right here, it probably won't be a problem, but I'm using some oil on a green Brillo pad just to get this service rust off. I'm gonna make sure this mates up flat. This yoke should be good because I, every now and then would come over here and put oil on it. Yeah, it's good. You don't want that pitted for sure. I'm just getting a couple of drops of uh, gear fluid from the transfer case. Just rub it on the yoke. You want this lubed up real nice when you put it in. Okay, let's get this exhaust on. I've talked about this numerous times. I am getting a different exhaust. It's just taking me a long time to figure out which one I want. I think I got it narrowed down, so I'm just putting this one on that came with the car for now. Okay, this is hard even with someone helping you because you gotta get gaskets on there and there's two different holes for this back one it can go into. I think we're good. Oh, we got one more right here. Put that in. I think I'm just gonna leave this open. I don't know, actually I don't want exhaust. I was just gonna leave this open instead of hooking the tips back up because I'm not gonna reuse the tips. But I don't want exhaust just getting thrown right at my powder coated heat shield and my powder coated subframe. So I'm gonna hook these tips up. I don't have gaskets. That's why they're covered in red silicone. Again, this whole exhaust is getting replaced. You should use gaskets 100%. All right, the exhaust is done. Tips are on. Now I gotta hook up my wide band, which for some reason was right here. It was a horrible design. Whoever made this exhaust because it butts right into your, what you call it? I understand it can be straight down because it hit the ground, but it could be like kind of at an angle or right over here. That'd be an awesome place for it. Just that way. Well, it has to be after this, so it's gotta be over here but this way. All right, let's hook up this wide band and I think we're done under here. All right, boys, I actually think I'm gonna end this one here. If you made it this far, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I wanted to make this all one video. I really did have it starting and everything. I just, it'd be too long. There's gonna be somebody that's like, oh, you should just put it in the car and then you should just show us it's starting. But there's like three or four of you guys that I know that are like doing the same exact thing or are in the process of starting to do this and wanted me to walk you through how I did all the other stuff. So there you go, man. It's, it should be started in the next video. All I gotta do is a few things. I gotta take all these pulleys back on. I gotta get that timing cover on. I wanted to leave it off because I'm gonna have to take the timing belt and everything off to put adjustable cam gears on, but the timing marks are on that cover. So I gotta put that cover on to get the car in time. And then it goes super fast from here on out. I got the oil cooler, the radiator, plugs, wires, intake plenum, run the turbo 
pipes, but I've shown that so many times I probably won't even record that part. All right, I think that's gonna be on this one, boys. This thing is sick. It's gonna be running. Things are gonna scream. See ya.